is that there's a lot of stuff that comes out of our mouth that is based in what we don't know. It's based in fear. It's based in insecurity. Or we speak out of guilt. Or we speak out of shame. Rather than speaking out of our identity, who we are in Christ, or what's been done for us, or what He's doing on our behalf. And learning the difference is a fine art, and it's the privilege of the redeemed. Because you possess the ability to do something that your dog and your cat don't possess. You should possess the ability to do a lot of stuff your dog and cat don't possess to do, but you have one that makes you superior to every other beast of the field. You can communicate rational thought by using your mouth. When God made you in His image, what was it that made you in His image? You walked upright, there are animals of the field that walk upright. You can reproduce yourself, all the animals of the field can reproduce themselves. You can make decisions, animals do that every day. None of those things made you in the image of God. What made you in the image of God and makes you in the image of God is the fact that you can communicate thought, that you can share your feelings and you can learn from your past. You can walk into an error and then decide you're not going to do that any longer. And you can tell other people that that's an error and they don't need to go there. That's in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. That's the spoken ability, the speaking ability that you have. And I think we ought to take it more serious because it separates us from dogs and cats. Well, if something separates us from dogs and cats, it's probably worth paying attention to. I mean, what happens if we stop paying attention to the fact that we put on clothes and they don't? Then we'd run around naked. Well, that's not a good world. I mean, I'm just taking a guess, but it's probably not a real good world. We want to be, we, we, we want to be able to guard that difference between us and the animals. Well, there's another difference in us and the animals, and that's the ability to speak into our situation. Speak of our situation, into our situation, what we're learning about our situation. And maybe what we're learning about ourselves. Well, I had to learn to do this as a husband. I've had to learn to do this as a father. You have to learn to do this as one of the sons of God. It's how to talk about who you are. It's not about saying the right scripture or quoting the right word or saying it just correctly or phonetically, making sure that everybody around you stops saying Jesus and starts saying Yeshua. I got jumped by someone in a church once because I kept talking about Jesus. I got jumped at the door for not referring to him as Yeshua. And I said, I'm not Hebrew. Why would I call him by his Hebrew name? I'm not Hebrew. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to call him by the name I can pronounce a little better. And the one that makes sense doesn't make sense for me to pronounce him in a language that's not my own. So, I, you know, little, little things. So it's not about saying it right and putting the inflection just right. Anybody, you know? So I'm not here about get, get to say it, get it phonetically correct. Let's make sure we're reading the right translation. That's not what it's about because I don't think that's the spirit of the word. I don't think that's the spirit of Jesus. And so as we start to learn about who we are, it's beginning to articulate that for a purpose and for a cause. But we need to learn a little bit about who we are. And I want to take you to Psalms. Go with me to the 116th Psalm. And this is decidedly in the very center of your, your Bible, both physically and, and it's right there pretty much in the center of the Old Covenant world. And you're a New Covenant people, so what business do you have reading Old Covenant texts? Well, perhaps you have a lot of business reading them because you've been, you can see those Old Covenant texts as having been fulfilled and filtered through a man named Jesus. And so now you get to look backward into the Old Testament with a new set of eyes, which is a beautiful thing. And so you take the knowledge that you have as new creations, children of the Spirit, and you look into an Old Testament text like Psalms 116. Now, I really am going to focus. This is only a 19-verse chapter. This is the beauty about the Psalms is not only are they great literature, most of them are short. And so you can read some great literature without having to commit yourself to three hours of Shakespeare's Hamlet. You know, you can still get some really good, not only do you get the good English language, but you get this beautiful prose written by people who were going through real life stuff just like us. Now they weren't necessarily facing the exact same challenges we are, but mankind has always faced challenges. We've always had our difficulties. And one of the ways that we filter through those difficulties is through music. Our culture is pretty good at it. We filter through what's going on in our life by writing a song about it. And that music tends to offend other people who aren't going through that exact same thing. And so people that are not having that experience tend to find something wrong with people who are having that experience. Most of our dislike for the music of a culture is because we're divorced from that culture. Why in the world would we get anything out of it? We don't know what they're talking about. 
And so that's why we've had to have a little bit of a change in church music, because we need to hear new voices. We need to hear what people are going through now. We need to know what the songwriter feels. It's not what someone felt just 200 years ago, although there's no reason to mock that. It was real for the guy 200 years ago. And what might we learn? So when you read the 116th Psalm or the 115th, etc., etc., you're hearing what someone was going through at the time. Now, it might not be completely relevant to the way you're going through it, but the human experience, cross cultures, cross time, and cross languages is so similar that you can learn something by watching people fail, right? By watching people fail and then succeed, there's a lot to be learned. The verse I really want to hone in on is actually in the middle, but I don't, this is so beautiful, I don't think that's fair to just jump to the middle. So I want to take you to the top of the 116th Psalm. We'll do just a little bit of work as we go through it, and then we'll concentrate on our text in the middle. I love how this starts. Watch this. Psalms 116.1. I love the Lord. It's a good start anyhow. I love the Lord because, because he's heard my voice and my supplications, because he has inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call upon him as long as I live. The psalmist says, I love him because when I talk, he listens. This is a powerful introduction to what is going to be a very powerful song. I love God not because He's just because He's good to me or not because He's worthy of my prayer. I love it that when I talk, He listens. And He doesn't just listen, He replies, He responds. So the psalmist is setting you up, setting you up for this understanding, I believe. The understanding that the ear of God and the response mechanism of God is directly linked to the tongue of man. God's ear and his action linked to the speech of his children. That shouldn't be a shocker. We're linked to the voice of our children. We learn their voice over every other kid in the neighborhood. We take them to the playground. They yell, Daddy, there's 50 daddies. There's, they yell, Mom, there's a thousand moms. And yet you know the one that's yours. Why? Because you're linked. There's something inside of you that belongs they belong there. They're a piece of your heart that is running around out there on the monkey bars. And when they scream mommy, even though there's a thousand mommies, you know exactly which mommy they're looking for and they're not looking for a different one. And your response is de directly linked to the sound of their voice. And so the psalmist just admits it and says, you know what I love about God? When I say something, he listens. And he doesn't just listen, he moves. And he does something on my behalf. This really flips the power dynamic a little bit of the way we've thought about God. Because according to the psalmist in 116, all I have to do is raise my voice and God gets up and comes into the room and says, what are you looking for? I yell and God says, what? I cry and God takes a step towards me. He says, I love God for that. I love it that when I'm in distress and I'm in trouble, he's there for me. So I want to link what the psalmist linked first. We're just copying. I don't do anything original. If I, if I say it, I, I, I just swiped it out of here. So <laughs> I didn't write any of this stuff. What he says is, God's ear is linked to my voice. God's response is linked to what I say. It doesn't mean if I say to somebody, I wish you were dead, God reaches down and kills them. What kind of a world would we live in? The correct answer is, none of us would. Because somebody would have already sent you to hell. Am I right? Yeah, pr pretty much. Yeah, most of us go, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that guy I cut off in traffic while ago, he would, yeah, he, he, he already sent me there, right? So, mouth linked to his ear. I love the Lord. Because he heard my voice and my supplication, he inclined his ear. I love that, that phrase, he inclined his ear. I'm inclined. I'm, I'm bent towards. I'm sort of inclined. See, I got two of my own. I'm inclined to move for them to a far greater degree than I am inclined to move for yours. I don't have any disrespect for your children, but my ear is not inclined to your children. My ear is inclined to my children. So there's a personal effect that happens in this moment where God's ear is inclined towards me. Therefore, I'll call upon him as long as I live. Why? If you see it, therefore, you need to know what it's there for. It's always a good Bible study trick. So I love the Lord 
Because he heard my voice and my supplications, he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, because of this information, I'm always going to call upon him. Why would I always call upon him? Because he always listens. That's easy, right? I mean, I always call out to daddy because dad always does something about it. So what I've learned is as long as I'm breathing, I'm going to be talking about what I know about my father. Because what my father knows about me is that I need his help.